let's talk about the Chris D'Elia situation, right? There's been some movement. There's been some change in what's basically occurred. Let me see if I can find it. Where are you? Where's the Chris D'Elia information? There's been some... Um, I guess Chris D'Elia basically essentially has um, released the receipts of the interactions that he's had with these young girls. Obviously, if you're not familiar, Chris D'Elia, a famous LA-based comedian, was accused of grooming, um, grooming teenage girls and also uh, sleeping with teenage girls, right? They accused him of being a pedophile um, right at the height of the accusations. A couple of girls came out on Twitter, accused him of trying to get with those girls when they were underage and pursuing them in a sexual manner, blah, 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 blah. A power dynamic conversation came into place there. Um, Me Too accusations read the ugly head as well. And just in general, right, being accused of pedophilia is a big, heavy, serious accusation. And from the looks of it, uh, from the accounts the ladies gave, it seemed like a fairly, um, you know, slam dunk accusation to put out there. He's a bad guy. He's a creep, whatever it may be. They released screenshots too, by the way, that uh, further, uh, further um, illustrated that, you know, Chris did do those kind of things. And it seemed like the entire community scene completely ditched the guy, right? Completely abandoned him. Um, but one thing that really rubbed me up the wrong way when I first saw it was the reaction from Brendan Schaub and Brian Callan. I thought it was really despicable that they decided to cry on t on their podcast on TV. It's just like I'm ne I'm never a fan of people that cry on camera anyway. I think those girls that get hysterical and point their camera in their face and start crying via the selfie camera there's something really psychotic about those kind of people right you're not you're not all there in the head and i think anyone that sort of like cries about their friends as if they're dying because they got involved in the scandal is not a friend i want to have and yeah i thought the video was really really funny so i'm gonna play a bit of it now at the, at the time it happened everyone was like oh man they're so real they're, 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 I think they're really emotional about this their friend um going through this mad thing but number one i thought was weird because when the video starts, you hear Brian say something like, oh, I haven't spoken to him, but I'm really disappointed. It's like, why would you speak about something so serious that involves one of your close friends without speaking to them first? That's the first thing that rubbed me up the wrong way. I was like, these guys are not friends, isn't it? This is like a typical Hollywood relationship where they're only friends with you because, you know, Chris is one of the most successful comedians in that scene. He tours, he makes a bunch of money. He's, you know, stamped by Hollywood's elites. He's in Netflix shows and all that sort of malarkey. So it pays, you know, it's, it's beneficial to your career to be associated with Chris D'Elia. Um, but then the moment he does anything wrong, hey, 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 you got to distance yourself. And then you got to go on camera and speak about something that's really serious at the time. Imagine this was right when it happened and essentially cry on camera um, somehow, you know, um, sending out a signal that, you know, somehow this guy's career is done. Because when it happened, you felt as if like, whoa, if these guys are crying on camera, this must mean Chris is completely finished. Then the information comes out, then you get some more context to the allegation because, you know, we shouldn't be trialing people in social media, right? If he's done, a, if he's committed a crime, he'll be held accountable to it. He'll go through the court of law. His career will be finished anyway, regardless. But to suddenly jump out the window and, you know, throw your friend under the bus is really just despicable. And I thought this video really rubbed me up the wrong way. Again, I have no horses race i don't know these people i just watched them from afar but this is fairly fairly despicable in my opinion let's play it brennan we have to uh at least talk about this um you guys if you follow the news if you're alive uh if you've been following this twitter thing the way we have uh well, you Brian's know already, going on with our friend brendan's Chris. already um welling up. i'm not you know that when these situations people in hollywood tell you what to say and um, oh, they, I, I, I oh, said to they Brandon, told Bra they, what we can do is tell them. They told Bra Bra Brian what to say for sure. Brian deleted every single picture of Chris Leo on his Instagram page and supposedly unfollowed him. I don't know if he did, but that's a rumor on the streets, right? Imagine deleting all your pictures on your profile of your friend, your actual friend. I get it. Hollywood, right? Association. Cool. No problem. Let's say you delete the pictures. Okay. Let me, let me give you that because you've got a career too. You've got a special. You've got two kids you got to look after, a wife to pay alimony to, whatever. I understand. Cool. Get it. But back your friend in private, my G. Well, now, we don't know. This could be a thing. But I don't want you talking about my issue just as it happens on your show because you have to. Remain silent. You don't, you don't owe anybody an explanation. You shouldn't have to speak about it in public or issue regarding your friends. People will understand. You'll get some trolls, some you know, some people that want to get a rise out of you saying, oh, why don't you talk about this? Uh, you coward, blah, blah. But for the most part, everyone will understand if you don't want to talk about it. If my friend went through something like this in public, no. Well, yeah, in public, right? Even on my level, I'm a nobody. 
somebody and somebody asks me at work, hey, I heard your friend did X, Y, and Z. It's none of your business. I'm not talking to you about this. This is my friend. I've spoken to him privately. I don't owe you an explanation. And if you judge me because of that, then, you know, go jump off a cliff somewhere, my friend. The truth. And I'm not going to sit here. I'm a man, and I define myself on how I respond to these situations in real time when the pressure's really on. And so this is what I'll say. Um, I always knew Chris is a ladies' man. I have never, and I'm going to say this, I have never seen or heard of him doing anything illegal, ever. (laughs) Um, This is as shocking to me as I'm watching this happen. I don't know what to think, and I don't know what to say. I don't. You could have just left it there and said, I don't know what to think, I don't know what to say, but I'm going to reach out to my friend Chris. I'm going to wait until more evidence comes out there. But for the women out there that have accused him, I hear you, I see you. But please allow me the time and the space for me to process the information, process what's going on, and speak to my friend. Not, I don't know him, I've never seen him. And then he says, I haven't told of the guy. Like, come um, on. But I have, I'm going to say it again. I have personally never heard or seen these him people, do anything these illegal. That's all I can say. And right now, I have to believe that because he's still a friend. And, and, and it may be unpopular to say that, but I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. And I'm not going to be I'm not going to be some uh, I, I, I just think it's an impossible situation. And uh, I'm I'm just at a loss. I'm at a loss. <laughs> look, look I'm, a praying, praying, I'm praying. I'm praying that. Um, Come on, brother. He's not true. dead. Maybe that's the best way to put it. I can't talk. It's just. And I have to be honest, at the time, it, at the time it happened, I thought it was really weird that they were crying on camera. And if anything, my spidey senses told me if somebody, if a man is crying like this over this sort of like accusation regarding his friend and you're a public figure and you had been in Hollywood, most of it, 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 it pays, you know, it's fair to say that he's probably worried that his skeletons might get revealed, which leads to the, which leads to the whole realization that maybe this issue is a good thing in general for the comedy scene in LA, right? They need to rein it in. They were probably going around being too reckless, trying to smash anything that moved that gave them a bit of attention, um, not treating girls with respect, because that's part of the reason why you see Chris Lea getting dragged online. If you read through, read between the lines of the stories, they're all BS, most of them for the most part, apart from a couple, depending on the information we get so far, it seems like there's a lot of girls who, a couple of them got ghosted, a couple of them had bad experiences with him because he was a jerk, but most of it's because he was a bad dude in interactions, right? He didn't engage, and I think one girl said he hooked up with him and when she went to the green room him and his friends were just on their phones they wouldn't engage in conversations chris went straight for the bang didn't even try and kiss the girl or you know foreplay nothing it was just all just him trying to basically tick the boxes right go to a city smash somebody go to another city smash somebody and essentially you know you can't treat girls like that right especially young girls who are impressionable or who hold you to some kind of level of high esteem they want you know if you if you're purporting to be this fun loving guy on the podcast you have to be the same kind of vibey guy in person just treat them with a little bit of respect and i'm sure this issue wouldn't have been a big deal i'm pretty sure of it of course if he's done anything illegal and actually attempted to sleep with girls that are underage or try to uh, you know groom or um you know pursue girls that are underage yeah if that comes out he's done for but if it's just him treating younger girls like crap he should know better you should know better but again if your friends are crying on camera what does that say for them like for real what does that say for them if he's crying on camera like this it's like it's a weird thing because i said to brendan i said it's like um you know it's it's like watching someone die or something but he's not dying is he really and, isn't also, it? That's, it's just, and if it's your friend you reach out to him so he doesn't Die so you can help him out. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> you know, I, we I haven't. Just, it's important to say we haven't spoken to Chris. No. And I'm we've shocked. never been. We've never been on the road with him. I, you know, never. I was. On and the, there's loads of pictures of him on the road with him together, or you know, performing in a in a comedy store. It, it doesn't really matter, really. This is a pointless thing. They were crying. They were they were sniffling. Whatever it may be, right? Let's move on from them because you know it's pretty despicable going forward. And then the other thing that was really funny is that. If you think back to it, do you remember when Harvey Weinstein was first accused and everyone started coming after Quentin Tarantino for his relationship with Harvey Weinstein? Look at how Quentin Tarantino reacted to that news and what Harvey Weinstein got accused of. Again, I don't, it's not about, you know, um, comparing what's worse, right, in severity, you know, trying to um, 
pursue teenage girls or underage girls is abhorrent Try, obviously trying to um, exploit the power imbalance in Hollywood with young and impressionable actors that are coming through to your studio is also abhorrent and being a sexual predator and whatever the stuff that Harvey Weinstein done is disgusting but look at how Quentin Tarantino reacted to that first thing right and this is somebody he worked with in Harvey who greenlit all these movies who for all intents purposes on from this from what Quentin Tarantino's impression of him was that this guy was a good dude. Look at how he reacted, right? This is an article from The Guardian. It says, Quentin Tarantino heartbroken over Harvey allegations. It says here, Quentin Tarantino broke his silence on the scandal surrounding his friend and longtime collaborator Harvey Weinstein. And look what he said. Quentin Tarantino quotes and said, for the last week, I've been uh, stunned and heartbroken about the revelations that have come to light about my friend for 25 years, Harvey Weinstein. I need a few more days to process my pain, emotions and anger and memory, and then I will speak publicly about it. That's what Quentin Tarantino said about Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein had, you know, dozens, more than 20 accounts right coming forward of women of age right women who'd you know with actual experience behind them with legitimacy with proof that he had sexually assaulted them raped them took advantage of them whatever it may be right and still Quentin Tarantino would wanted to wanted to have some um time to pause and reflect before he made a made his opinions public about his friend because from his side because if you're a monster right you're able i'm pretty sure if you're a monster you're able you're really able to sort of like show different people different sides of your personality some people see the good guy some people see the evil dude so i'm sure Quentin tarantino was only seeing the good side of harvey Weinstein. he never probably saw the jerk or the creeper dude right for all intents and purposes it's safe to assume that and even in that instance, he didn't want to throw his friend under the bus. But these guys, right, the people who are bastions for free speech, oh, we're comedians, we're the last last hope for free speech, and we, we, we have this podcast so we can say what we want and we can have a few money. The moment one of their friends gets accused of something, they all buckle, throw him under the bus, delete all their pictures from their social media feed, and essentially never mention him again like he's a bloody, you know, like he's the boogeyman. It's insane, isn't it? It's insane. And I hope he's realizing that what his friend, you know, I hope this whole experience shows Chris exactly who his friends are, for sure. And then this clip from, um, I saw on Twitter, really encapsulates my thoughts on the issue. This is Danny Glover talking about the importance of friendship and what actual friendship, real friendship actually means, right? Not this fakey stuff you're seeing displayed on social. Okay. I love Mel Gibson. Okay. So you can say that Danny Glover says he loves Mel Gibson. I, 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 but, you know. but I have I have friends who. Well, I, I'm not. That's, this is not an interview with you. This interview with me. Got it. I, got it. I understand that. I, I say it all the way. What your what your, Hey, wait. No, 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 no. What your friend says that is, uh, is relevant to your friends was relevant to me is that I love Mel Gibson. Do we have another question? Do 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 you talk? No, I say I asked you. Okay, you. So I asked you. I, I said, I told you what I felt. I talked to Mel. I mentioned that before. I talked to Mel. I, I, I called Mel on his birthday, January 3rd, and wished him happy birthday. So what's the next question? That's Danny Glover talking about Mel Gibson. Somebody that has a catalog, a catalog of instances where he's proven to be an anti-Semite, maybe, you know, a little bit racist, right? This is Danny Glover defending Mel Gibson, who happens to be his friend. Why? Because he's your friend. We all have jerk friends. We all have people that are abhorrent in our social circles. But you know what? You put up with it because they're your friend. Because they provide you with more good than bad. And it is what it is. But this whole like throwing your friends under the bus publicly is just... Oh, I just again and I'm not even it does nothing to do with me I'm not even a friend guy I don't really have that many friends myself but I just see some people sometimes with these clicky you know Instagram friends and calling everyone brother and putting their hand arms around everybody and saying this is my boy and the moment you actually need them for actual for something to back you up for an emotional support to really kind of maybe stand their ground and really kind of you know put their, their reputation on the line to sort of like you know help you out no no, they all buckle under the pressure. They all buckle. They all buckle. And another good example, Whitney Cummings, right? Somebody who was, you know, m instrumental in Chris D'Elia's career. She even went ham on him as well and decided to throw him under the bus as well. And this is even more egregious because supposedly she hi got, helped him to hire a lawyer, get a lawyer and all that sort of stuff. And then since then, she's completely ghosted him. But she even posted a statement on Twitter saying, it's taken me a couple of days to post the information I've learned for, about Chris. I'm devastated and enraged about what I've heard and learned. This is a pattern of predatory behavior. So she's already assuming that what those girls have said is completely true. The first bit is fine, right? You can be disgusted and appalled, cool. But to assume what those girls are saying is true is disgusting. 
it's really especially considering she was the one the people saying oh me too and believe all women silly and now she's subscribing to her. and again i'm i'm gonna continue saying if chris is guilty he's guilty but let him have his day in court don't chastise and you know um somebody based on allegations allegations with no proof so far we've had no especially the grooming bit we obviously have seen there's a catalogue of instances where chris seems to go for girls that are you know young looking right he tends to like girls who look like they could be underage is that creepy is that a bit weird yes but we see that all the time you go to las vegas you see some old decrepit dude with some girl that looks like she just about graduated college it's weird but do you go around taking pictures of them uploading it so you can cancel them no because you're aware that they're two consenting adults hopefully right two consenting adults. we have to decide when are when up when are you when are you an adult and when are you a child if it's 18 cool that's fine but that's it is it disgusting if a 43 year old is sleeping with an 18 year old yes is it odd if a 40 if a 43 year old wants to have an 18 year old girl as a girlfriend yes it is because you're wondering how what the hell are they even talking about but let people do what they want to do if they don't mind it and if they're okay with it it's fine and again if your friend is accused of being of being a pedophile you know what you know how much weight that term pedophile holds i think you could you're probably likely if you're able to again depending on who you are depending on what industry you work in if you rape somebody right as abhorrent as a crime as can be you could probably bounce back and salvage your career some way maybe you have to move to europe and learn a language and do stand up in lithuania but if you're labeled a pedophile you are done done especially if it's if it's um if it's found out it's true you're finished so you have to be very careful. But I guess it's the same thing with racism, right? Oh, racist, racist. People are quick to chuck around that term and it doesn't really hold any weight anymore. It's like suck your mother, right? People say it so often now, it doesn't really have anything. It doesn't really have any punch behind it anymore. Before, if someone said that to you, it's an instant punch over the face. It's an instant punch in the face. Now it's like, meh. Do you know what I mean? It's like someone calling you a wanker. It doesn't really have the same amount of reverence it did in the past because it's been devalued because people just throw it around. Labeling someone a pedo is a really serious thing. And if he is a pedophile, let him have his day in court. If he's found guilty, cool. Throw the key, lock him away, done. Even if he's found not guilty and the evidence shows that he probably got away on the technicality, his career is still done regardless. But in this instant, right now, there's no proof that he's a pedophile. He just likes younger mm -hmm. girls. He got caught out, I think, with one of them where it seemed like he, you know, reached back out again when she turned of age. That was a bit strange. But technically, it's not illegal. But anyway, here's Tech Willie Cummins' statement. He continues, This is a pattern of predatory behavior. This abuse of power is enabled by silence. And now that I'm aware, I won't be silent. Oh, my God, Whitney. He's your friend, Whitney. He's your friend. Come on. Um, girls should be able to be a fan of a comedian they admire without becoming sexual targets. It's an adult's responsibility to be an adult. That I agree with, right? That end bit. I think this is an awakening for the whole community of comedy. I think they all, especially the men in the com comedy community, especially the ones that are kind of, you know, young and g going for it, um, there has to be an uh, acknowledgement that you should be, I don't, I don't know, there should be a level of professionalism. I think if you work in industry, working in a particular industry and you, you know, cultivate a fan base of young girls, it's probably your responsibility to um, be an adult in that situation. I'd imagine, especially if most of the girls coming up to you look really young, it's up to you to, to not really play into it, right? And if you do decide to do it, um, you have to make sure that they're consenting, you know, they're, they're of age, all that good stuff, right? You have to, I don't know, you have to go through a lot of things to make it work. But I think you should probably be, um, it should probably be, let's not fuck our fans thing, right? Just a rule. Don't fuck your fans uh, and don't fuck your colleagues, your peers. Just kind of, it's off bounds. So when you go to work, you go to the comedy store, you treat that as a job. It's an occupation. You be professional. Um, you don't get too intoxicated. You don't get, you know, too high on drugs, whatever it may be. You go there, you do your job, you, you put on a great show so that your fans can rave about you, tell their friends, the world spreads, it adds to your ticket sales and you can go tour the world until the cows go, until you're old and grey, right? That's the, that should be the hope. You shouldn't be trying to, you you know push it to the limit in your infancy right Chris Lee is still young he shouldn't be going around trying to bloody smash everything that moves just to, you know as his career is absolutely going for the moon he should just be taking it easy and relaxing that's what you should be doing but come on guys let's not pretend like you know comedy clubs are a bloody church or a sunday school then oh, sunday school is probably the wrong term but it's just i don't know i don't know in the end it's going to be a good thing anyway it's going to wake up some of the creeps in the comedy scene to like you know get the acting order but the lack of absolute loyalty from some of these supposed friends is really frightening, I would say. And it's definitely a, definitely a 
a cautionary tale for anyone in the entertainment industry. Be careful who you call a friend. Be careful who you think has got your back because when the chips are down, when you are involved in some kind of controversy, they will throw you under the bus happily.